Hello, this is Jordan with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be discussing the Black Diamond Natural Process Las Lajas Costa Rica from Corvus. And there's the tin right there. And real quick, I purchased this coffee as part of a set with the La Mandarina. I don't need to talk too much about Corvus, I have a couple of videos up on them already if you wanted to check those out. I purchased this coffee because I was kind of curious. I wanted to compare it to the other Las Lajas's. I have three other Las Lajas reviews on this channel. Uh, two from Onyx and one from Brandywine. And I wanted to, I guess, get a different perspective from a different coffee roaster, see how different this coffee might be compared to them. So I'm gonna talk about all four of them at the end of this video, kind of compare. I'm guessing this might be my last Las Lajas of the year. And this is day 14. All right, let's talk about this one specifically. So day seven, bit of a slightly subdued black cherry, nothing overly prominent, and it was a nice full-bodied coffee. After that day, I decided, you know what, I wanna experiment with this coffee, and I experimented with this coffee. I put it through the cone filter, very rich, full-bodied black cherry, really, really nice. I really enjoyed it on that day. And day 11, I brewed it with Corvus's recipe on their website, and I felt like it was better through the cone filter. That day it was a slightly more acidic black cherry that I was getting. And then day 13 I was getting a little bit of a kind of chocolatey wine in addition to that black cherryness, but obviously the black cherry was the most prominent thing throughout this coffee. In a straightforward, most easy way to describe this coffee, I would say like a black cherry cake, maybe a slight Dr. Pepper. Some kind of nice, unique, different flavors that I wasn't getting as much from the other Las Lajas Costa Ricas. Those were, both of them were so different compared to this one. I'll go ahead and put up the tasting wheel right now so you can see what I was getting. And the two things that will jump out on this chart are obviously the berry fruit and the lingering finish. So technically cherry is a berry fruit, so that's why it's as high as it is. Uh, this coffee lasts quite a bit, definitely a long lasting lingering finish, which is very nice. I enjoy it quite a bit. Other things kind of high, the sweetness, acidity, and florality in this coffee. And the bitterness and smokiness, they're at a level three, but I don't see those as negatives. A lot of the time I don't enjoy the bitterness and smokiness in coffee. I like my coffees to be a little bit more clean than that, but I thought that actually balanced this coffee really well. I think just the roast profile as a whole made this coffee really nicely balanced. I mean, look at this tasting wheel here and you have a couple of things at level four, but nothing below a level two and everything else would be a level three. So just overall in this tasting wheel, really nice balance on this coffee. And this gives me an opportunity to compare it to the other three Las Lajas I had had and this is probably the part I was most looking forward to in this video. Those two Las Lajas I had had from Onyx both were natural processed and they were both slightly lighter than this coffee. And with both of those coffees, they were very, very similar. I liked the SL28 a little better, but they were very fermented cherry, very red fruit forward, like so many cherries and a bit of raspberries in both of them. And I got burned out by both of those coffees by the end, the SL28 I thought was better, probably the best Costa Rica I'd had up until that point. And then we had the brandy wine, which I felt was a slightly off roast. I felt like they roasted a little darker than they had intended. This is mostly because the person that worked at the place that sold me the coffee said that the first time he had tried it, it wasn't that like roasty, it wasn't that dark, and he wasn't expecting the batch he sold to made to be that way. So again, I felt that one was darker. It was definitely darker than this Corvus, but by accident, that's not what they were intending with their coffee. This one on the other hand, so that black cherry is, it's really nice. It's probably one of the nicest flavor profiles I've had from any coffee this year. The great balance on this, this is again, one of those testaments to how good Corvus is and how slightly underrated they are. I think for me personally, maybe it's because I've had so much of those Onyxes and they just burnt me out. I like this Las Lajas better than I liked the Brandywine or either of those Corvus Las Lajases. And I think it's definitely a preference thing. Straightforward, 
the flavor profile and the tasting wheel that we're probably seeing in those Las Lajas are traditionally something I go for. You know, very bold flavors, you know, that very strong natural kind of component to it. Whereas this one's more balanced and I typically prefer the like extreme strong fruit flavors. The balancedness, the balance of this coffee was just better for me. I really did enjoy this coffee. To my surprise, I thought I was done with Las Lajas for the year that I couldn't drink anymore, but this coffee right here actually did a very good job and salvaged something that I thought I just couldn't drink anymore. But you know, there's Corvus. Sometimes they will just really surprise you with how good they can do their own coffee. So great job, Corvus. I'm going to leave my discussion of this coffee at that. If you've tried this coffee as well, please let me know what you thought. And since this is probably going to be my last La Haas video, last La Haas video for the year at least, tell me what you thought about the last La Haas this year, given how popular it was. If you're enjoying the content, like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. But this right here has been a discussion of the Black Diamond Natural Process Las Lajas Costa Rica from Corvus. Thank you for watching.